Please note, the following story contains very graphic and jarring content that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Have you ever been hit with the feeling where time just stops whilst making the most difficult decision of your life? I have. It was the most pressurizing, stressful, and scariest decision I ever made, but I somehow managed the right choice. It was a very narrow escape. First things first. I am a prison security officer working at a very dark but highly facilitated prison in Detroit. I'd have to say half of Hell's Spawn dwells here. The worst criminals you could ever imagine all decided to converge into one place. That place just so happened to be here. Let me tell you, this place is the most screwed up grime hole you could ever imagine. Think of a place with barely any rules inhabited by unruly citizens. This is it. It turns you into a person you never thought you'd be. Your mind becomes easily desensitized and corrupt over the course of a month or so. The least cringeworthy crime somebody has committed here was probably aggravated assault, on multiple counts. Oftentimes, me and the other guards would try to find somebody who had the lightest charge or charges on them when we got bored, if there were no child molesters to beat the hell out of for fun. Prison fights here are a daily basis. Riots used to be monthly rituals. Many of us used to wonder how the hell we survived for this long before we upgraded. We became so uptight. We are authorized to fire upon anyone who causes misconduct and try everything to keep things in order before we have to fire a shot. It really messes with your head and makes you forget proper ethics and reason. I've seen guards shoot prisoners just because they didn't like them. The cells get darker and colder the deeper you get into the facility. Some of them make you wonder if they're even supposed to be a holding cell. We sometimes traveled there since the prison fills up pretty quickly while the older ones take leave. The deepest hall had an ambiance of dreadful darkness. The occasional rat squeal could be heard, the stereotypical moisture dropping sounds were present. You could sometimes hear the prisoners screaming and pitching a fit while losing their sanity. Just the feeling of the hall gave you the creeps. It was cold and able to send chills down your body no matter how many times you've been down there. There was, however, one strange room that we noticed at the end of one of the halls. It was found in the depth of the cell block. It seemed to have an old steel bar for a handle. It had four strange looking locks. There was a very faded square of what used to be a sign. I never knew what it once said, and neither did the other guards. The only letters that I could make out were OOR at the bottom right corner. Nobody that we knew had ever been in those doors, except the very few highest ranking officials. Some of us had questioned the door, and they were all told the same thing. That's classified. A rumor leaked that dead bodies were stored in there, but it wasn't solid enough for most of us to believe it. We all just knew something wasn't right about that room. Today, a major prison riot broke out. Who knows what started it? It all seemed so planned out. So cleverly timed. Three guards were killed instantly, with a giant mob of orange suits attacking everyone else in sight. Some had small, almost useless weapons, which escalated into bigger and much more dangerous weapons. The guards' batons were taken and used to bash doors and their heads. A few of them somehow salvaged some firearms and were using them against us. The guards in the more populated rooms had no chance. There were many groups wandering around, either trying to let out other prisoners or find the emergency gun cache. It was hidden very well in the facility, but it wouldn't go undiscovered for long. It could eventually be found, especially with the determination of the prisoners. I ran into one of the top secret rooms, which was open, but deserted. I reached into an open drawer hidden under a desk in the corner of the room. There was a key. It wasn't like any key I've ever seen. It was shaped like a skeleton key, except the studs were shaped in strange thunderbolt-like patterns. There was a note next to it that said, Warning. Authorized use only for this key, or lethal force will be used. I somehow instantly knew what it was for, so I ran towards the depths of the jail while dodging incoming prisoner blows. I managed to throw a deadly nosebreak to one of them and slammed another. I don't remember how I got there. I must have blacked out from the fights. As I stood at the end of the long hallway, 
I felt a strange, suspenseful dread course throughout my body. The closer I neared the door, titled OOR, the more nervous I felt. I quivered, probably from the coldness of the cell and the slight fear that was bothering me. The dripping of moisture must have been the loudest sound I had ever heard at the time. I felt lightheaded, wondering what I was about to experience. However, I did not have much time. Whether I was going to hide in the room or bunker in for safety, I needed to get in. So I placed the key into the locks. It required some effort to awkwardly twist the key. Each one had a loud breaking sound when they were unlocked. I paused. I felt very uncomfortable. I knew it had to be done. I grabbed the metal handle and pulled. It didn't budge. It required a lot more effort to be opened. It scraped against the ground and slowly creaked its way open. Steel grinding against the tough floor, it produced an eerie echoing creaking sound. I went inside and closed the door until there was only a crack. It was dark, pitch dark. I could barely see the crack from the door. All I saw was blackness. The room seemed to be spacey enough to spread out my arms without touching the walls. I felt for a switch, lever, something, anything to produce even just a little bit of light. I felt a string that seemed to be attached to something above me, so I pulled on it. An old-fashioned metal hanging light shone from above. There, in front of me, was a steel cylinder. Not only was it locked with a safe wheel and four other strange-looking locks, but it was bolted shut, like it was never meant to be opened. Then, the answer to all my curiosity to what was in this room came upon me when I saw a metal peephole. It was locked closed. It was placed about three feet above my head. For context, I'm six foot one. The cylinder towered over me. My height only reached half that of the cylinder. I found a key laying on a steel drawer nearby that I didn't notice before. I placed the key into the peephole lock to see if it would work, and to my surprise, it fit perfectly. I took off the lock and took a deep breath. This is it. No turning back. I slowly slid the peephole open. I felt like I couldn't move any part of my body besides my hand. Immediately, I saw two dim, scarred eyelids inside. Both eyes were not only scarred, but had a clear, previously cut gash down the middle. I froze for a second, but then after a bit, I said, Hello? The eyes opened swiftly, without warning. These eyes were like nothing I've ever seen. One was discolored and white, as if it were a blind eye. The other was red. Blood red. He responded with a very deep voice that came from his belly. Yes. It was a deep, booming, raspy voice, full of despair and hate. The air filled with the sound of his speech. Hello? I stuttered. I was too scared to even move. Not only the eyes were scarring to look at, but the feeling of dread was upon me. You wake me for what reason? He sounded quite angry. I, I honestly don't know. The, the prisoners, they all just revolted. They overpowered us, and this is the only place I could go. The inevitable deaths have come upon you. You only have one choice. The power and creepy feeling of his voice was enough to make you tremble in fear. No amounts of steel could protect you from this type of fear. H who are you? 959, was all he said. Why do they keep you locked up in this chamber, if I may ask? Behind you. At this point, I was shocked and scared to death. I was certain that there was actually someone behind me, ready to kill me with their bare hands. I turned, and there was a metal cabinet nearby. I walked over to it, noticing that my feet were shaking, and I opened it. Inside were many files. Open, said Prisoner 959. The bellow of his voice startled me. I opened one file named Crime Scene Photos. Instantly, I was disgusted and grew sick to my stomach. One of the pages read, 12 Victims in Squatter Home Cellar. Next to it was a picture of bodies impaled through the mouth and out of the coccyx. They were upside down, stripped, bloodied, and bearing almost no layers of skin. 
Their mouths were stretched wide open and their jaws unhinged so that the poles which impaled them could fit. Some of them had absolutely no teeth but bloody gums squeezing on the poles. Their eyes were rolled back into their head and some of them were facing directly at the camera. The bloodshot whites of their eyes displayed the pain and agony that they must have gone through. Behind them, there was a message written in blood on the cellar concrete wall reading, Penance. I had never seen such a revolting picture in my life. You did all this? I trembled. They deserved it, quietly replied the prisoner. I looked deeper and it showed a picture of a cell from the prison. There was so much gore in the cells. I remember overhearing about this incident from prisoners, but I didn't know if it was actually true. There lay two of what seemed like dead inmates on the ground, and one was nailed to the wall with a long metal piece from the bed. They were so terribly mangled that they couldn't have been recognized as human. Oh my god, this actually happened? It's true? Yes, the voice said quietly. I looked at the other files, attempting to look for information on this sick freak. I read that his real name was unknown, but his famous alias seemed to be Karn. His guest age was 30. He was a massive, hulking man, 7.1 feet tall and weighing at 304 pounds. I couldn't believe it. Taking on someone of his magnitude was impossible without enough firepower. His early life is completely unknown. He has 103 confirmed murders, although he potentially has claimed 170. Skipping along his biography, he apparently has killed many known criminals. He had killed two cops as well. He was caught in the act of flaying a fully conscious man alive after people heard the overwhelming screams from nearby, and it took six tasers to take him down. He survived two shotgun shells to the side and stomach. All the victims and crimes were kept confidential to keep the public from fearing the streets. Now I can see why this man, or thing, is kept in a secret room with a very secure chamber. Why? Why did you do all this? I yelled in disbelief. They deserve to die. They deserve to suffer. They deserve to rot, he said. Why? Why did they deserve to die? I was on the verge of insanity from what I had seen. They inflicted others with pain. They must suffer penance. I had to think fast. The prisoners were closing in. There was no chance of hiding back here for long, and my gun won't protect me against all of them. My hand-to-hand -hand skills are good, but I can't go on forever. I was cornered. Here and there, I could very faintly hear gunshots outside. The last possible choice I could have is to release the prisoner. I could only hope he killed only those who deserved it, though not in the methods that he used in the past. If he would help me, it could be my only chance to get out alive. If I help you out of there, will you help me? No. I will help the ones who could be victimized by these heaps of meat. Does that include me? I was praying at this point for a miracle. Yes. I quickly grabbed a strange-looking tool from the cabinet. It seemed like it would take out the bolts from the door. I quickly took them out, and they clanged to the floor. I then carefully unlocked the locks one by one, very slowly but carefully, hearing nothing but the sound of the key jiggling the pins. Then came the final step, the safe wheel. It looked very threatening and uninviting, but I had no choice. I turned it multiple times, using all my might, thinking it would never open. Suddenly, a very loud, piercing clang noise echoed throughout the room. It scared me and made me fall back. I watched as the door slowly opened, producing a loud creaking noise. Inside stood the prisoner, just as his file described. He was a giant. He was wearing ragged, old, orange clothes, greased up to the point where it was almost gray. He was a mess. His face was terribly scarred. Not a single patch of skin on his face was smooth. His malicious eyes stared back at me, one of them white, one of them red. They stared at me from behind a mask which covered his nose and mouth. It had straps that wrapped around to the back of his head and seemed to have parts that went into his mouth. Instantly, I referenced it to Hannibal Lecter. The mask was probably designed to keep him from biting. 
His scars left you speechless with fear. He had very long, black hair, which lengthened down to his waist, and there were chains around his limbs. I thought to myself how I would unchain him without freaking the hell out. But just then, he broke the chains right out of the chamber. Just like that. A human being ripping the chains out from the chamber with ease. He stepped out of the chamber. His boots produced a loud thump that you could feel on the ground. He towered over my head. He came up to me, staring me in both eyes, into my soul, and past it. He was extremely enraged. I felt so frightened, I just couldn't move. I was shivering throughout my whole body. I wouldn't dare budge or twitch. He put his hands forward. I thought he was going to wring my neck, but he didn't. He was showing his handcuffs so I could unlock them. I did so, then slowly sidestepped out of the way. He just kept staring at me, staring at me with a look as if he wanted nothing more than to gouge my eyes out. But he slowly turned and went on his way. He opened the door with almost no effort and thumped down the cell block hall. I watched him as he made his way down. All of a sudden, two prisoners arrived around the corner and darted down the block. That proved to be the biggest and last mistake of their lives. Immediately, they saw Karn and just froze, but worse than I ever did. They must have known about the incident in the cell. They were too shocked to budge. Their eyes widened. Unexpectedly, the giant drew back his hand and backhanded his fist into the side of the first prisoner's head. His head smacked off the door of one of the holding cells and drew blood all over his face. 959 grabbed the second prisoner's face and smashed the back of his head against the other side where the wall was. Instantly, brain matter, blood, and pieces of skull blotched everywhere, making a gory mess on the wall and floor. I was speechless. I couldn't say or do anything from this point. 959 killed two men with little effort. By the time I collected myself and regained what was left of my sanity a few minutes later, I started down the hall towards the direction that 959 went. It wasn't long before the commotion in the prison went from angry riots to blood-curdling screams, cries for help, pleas for mercy, and groans of agony. I saw the remains of prisoners scattered all around. As the halls and rooms grew smaller, all I could see were bloodied fragments covering orange clothing. Some were impaled on bars in the same fashion as before, which were made from a ripped-off cell door. Gunshots fired, but it seemed to do nothing about the screams. I ran towards the path of dismembered limbs and corpses. Not a single life was spared. No quarter, no warning, no mercy. Every prisoner was grotesquely murdered in cold blood. One of them was hung up over a railing by an orange pair of pants. The only bodies that weren't mangled as badly as the orange suits were the guards. Most of their corpses were intact. The ones that were still alive were scared to death. Maybe they were saved. When I caught up to 959, I could see him stomp on a prisoner's head, squashing it like a grape. He was pulling a prisoner off a guard by his neck. He picked him up, slammed him against the wall, and squeezed until his neck made a loud cracking sound. He was killed instantly. Another inmate attempted to rush at 959 with the butt of a shotgun. He rammed it into his back, but it barely even budged him. In response, prisoner 959 turned around and grabbed the gun. The inmate tried to punch him in the face, but he blocked it with his right hand, grabbing it, and struck the elbow with his left hand, dislocating it. The inmate screamed in pain. 959 then proceeded to bludgeon him to a shattered, boneless pulp with the shotgun until it broke apart. He then shoved the barrel into the inmate's abdomen. A hiding prisoner attempted to grab me from behind. I turned, elbowing him in the head twice, and bent over to grab his right leg. I rolled forward and pushed back as hard as I could dislocating his limb. There was no chance of him getting up. However, Karn didn't think the same thing. He grabbed the prisoner's intact left leg, straightened it, and crunched it into his body. The prisoner screamed in pain and agony from the shock. 959 walked on like it never happened. The other guards and I were able to get as situated as we could once the SWAT arrived. However, once they made it, 959 was long gone. Prisoner 959 has never been heard of since. He had disappeared without a trace. He left no signs of leave after the bloodbath of a jail. Investigators and authorities have searched up and down the city, inside and out. 
Eyes were kept open for more gruesome reports. They have found nothing. I can honestly see why they have sought him tirelessly. He could be anywhere, doing anything, to anybody. What's up, everybody? This is the Lone Wolf here. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to the story of Prisoner 959. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, especially those of you new to my channel. Turn on the bell for notifications and join the Lone Wolf Pack. If anybody wishes to reach out to me regarding personal stories, recommendations, future collaborations, advice about the channel, or just to say hi, there will be links to all of my social media platforms in the description below. I'm mostly active on Twitter and Instagram, but I also have an email, TikTok account, and Discord server that you can message me on as well. Until next time, stay spooky. And remember, the hunt begins when the moon is full. See you soon. <laughs>